Welcome to the Toe Club Industry Podcast. My name is Art, and today we're going to be doing some recent news stories. Um, like I've done before, I would like to remind all the towers that have tuned in that, you know, my interest here is not to make uh, towers look bad in the aggregate. Uh, you'll notice that I don't often cite their names. Um, I have no interest in doing so, but I do want to raise awareness as to the potential pitfalls uh, of our conduct as towers uh, in the course of doing business. So I would like to bring you this first story. It's out of Tennessee and it's proposed legislation that is going to uh, be done in an effort to control uh, and or regulate uh, booting and or towing uh, from private property. So, you know, when I was reading through this story, um, I'll give you some highlights here that I think are important. Um, and I would love for everybody to uh, pipe in with their thoughts, uh, comment on some of our threads on social media. I'd like to hear what some of you have to say about all these stories. So let's get started here. Uh, again, booting and towing regulation proposal. I believe this is in the greater Nashville area. So according to the story, uh, they're looking to cap the cost of booting at $75. Um, you know, I don't know this market that well, so I can't really comment on whether or not I think that's competitive. Um, however, that is what the story is indicating. And it looks like too, they would like you to remove the boot uh, within 30 minutes. Um, there is plenty of other jurisdictions in the country that have requirements in terms of how a tower should respond or a booter if, if the booting is done by a company that only does booting. But there are some other jurisdictions in which they do regulate, you know, how quickly you can and should respond uh, to a vehicle owner's request to either remove a boot uh, or claim a vehicle. On the towing side, it looks like they're trying to regulate um, the what I often refer to as a drop fee uh, in which, you know, the tower is attempting to tow the vehicle. He's got it lifted, secured to the truck, and um, the vehicle owner comes to interrupt uh, that process. It looks like they're looking to cap drop fees at $100. Um, obviously, as many of you know, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of these stories, um, you know, sometimes the details can be fuzzy. And in many cases, um, there is uh, more to the story than what's written. But my thoughts about this one here are, you know, generally, when you see proposals like this, there's usually a reason for these legislative efforts. And that is, you know, because there could be or could have been at some point in this area or in this state, uh, bad actors operating. And that sometimes can spawn uh, legislation like this. Um, it's curious, uh, I'm curious, I should say, to try to determine or find out, because there's a reference made in the article that the booters are going to be licensed by the local municipalities. I'm curious to see what criteria is going to be used to determine eligibility for licensing, et cetera. So that will be interesting. And I'm also curious as to whether or not towers are also booting or is the booting in this area being done by people who are only doing booting. So that is interest. Those are some interesting things. Uh, those are my thoughts on this story. And again, a reminder that if you're doing private property towing uh, and or booting, uh, definitely conduct uh, these operations thoughtfully as there's many requirements in a lot of different jurisdictions. Um, so moving on, um, we're uh, back in California. There was a story recently written um, about some recent uh, snowstorms uh, that we had a few hours from here in the Bay Area of California in Truckee. And in this instance, uh, there was a severe blizzard that basically shut down many of the access roads to Lake Tahoe and Reno area. And the towers were under an enormous amount of pressure to clear the roads. And these were roads that were closed. Um, so there was, there, this article in particular referenced that there was hundreds of vehicles between 100 and 300, I think uh, the story indicated, uh, that needed to be recovered as a, as a result of this extreme weather event. And, you know, they were working nonstop uh, recovering these vehicles, as you might imagine. Uh, what's also interesting that the story mentioned is that 
during the course of these vehicles being stranded, many of them had passengers inside. Uh, some were hospitalized. Some were taken to uh, hotels uh, by emergency personnel. And so to give you know the listeners an idea of the circumstances here, this is a closed road, just a blizzard, just dumping snow. And again, uh, I do want to congratulate the towers here for toughing this out and working through these extremely, uh, in some cases, unsafe and difficult conditions uh, to work outside. There is um, a lot of concern, according to the story, about some of the fees, the recovery fees uh, that were charged by towing operators uh, during this event. Um, and I know, you know, as some of you are listening here, you might be rolling your eyes because yet again, somebody is complaining about um, the fees uh, that are being charged by towers. And, and I can certainly understand that, but that is one of the uh, points of emphasis in the story. Um, my thoughts here after reading this story, uh, putting some thought into the impact of the story and the impact uh, of, of how stories like this can really harm the industry in, in some respects, um, depending on, you know, what the details are and, and, and sometimes what the facts are, because as you might imagine, uh, in many cases, a lot of these facts are left out of these stories. Um, and I am not in a position to determine whether that's the case or not the case. Uh, however, uh, judging by, uh, you know, reading a lot of these stories and judging by, um, you know, my experience in the industry and sometimes reading these stories, oftentimes I, I often scratch my head and say, hey, wait a minute, there's something missing here. Uh, but here are my thoughts. Um, this is a few hours from us. I am familiar with this area. Uh, during a snowstorm and or a blizzard, this area is extremely dangerous, really high elevation, um, very, very many uh, unsafe uh, highways and, and, and throughways and roads that can get really, really hazardous uh, during uh, weather like this. So it is very important to keep that in mind, uh, not only for the case of, you know, not only for supporting in evidence in terms of, hey, the reason why these fees were high, but also uh, with respect to the conditions that the towers had to deal with in the course of recovering these cars. Um, another thing I, I think is important to point out for people, for the detractors of the industry, you know, is um, this level of volume, as indicated in the story, is an extremely rare event. Um, this is not regular for towers in this region to experience this level of volume and this this amount of recoveries in such a short period of time, which I believe was like 18 to 24 hours. So it's important to keep that in mind. Um, and again, I, I want to remind everyone, these towers were enduring extremely difficult conditions. So we definitely need to keep that in mind. Um, for those that are listening as well, who are not towers, vehicle recovery is costly. It's among the most dangerous um, thing that can be done to a vehicle by towers. Uh, you're using your winches, your recovery boom to recover vehicles that have either left the roadway or, or that are on the roadway and are immobilized for a variety of reasons. So we need to keep all of these uh, factors in mind, um, particularly to those who are not towers. I would like for those people to keep these factors in mind when trying to pass judgment um, in, in the course of, you know, uh, evaluating uh, whether or not one would think that fees are reasonable or unreasonable. Uh, and I know some of the towers out there are sort of cringing at, at hearing that uh, because oftentimes uh, industry people um, take exception to people who haven't done this kind of work um, chiming in about rates, uh, et cetera. Uh, moving on, uh, we're back in Tennessee, this time in Memphis. And this is a story involving private property towing, um, which is something that I do in the course of operating my towing business. And I do not like reading stories like this. I think that most towers don't. Um, and I think it contributes to a very poor impression of the industry. But I will uh, reserve judgment on this story until more facts are known, because there's a lot of uh, fuzzy details in this story as well. However, um, this story is alleging that on a property in Memphis, Tennessee called Serenity Towers, um, the property management company had apparently hired a tower um, who had been towing vehicles from the property and residents have been complaining about these vehicles getting towed. Um, and it, 
if you if you're reading the story uh, in detail, there's an indication that the property manager had told the tower, hey, listen, stop towing. I, I don't want your services here any longer. And according to the story, the tows continued to happen. Residents continued to get towed. Um, and it, it seemingly got so bad that the property manager indicated to the residents uh, that they should park off site until the situation was resolved. And this raises a lot of questions and alarm bells in my mind. Um, but here, here is kind of my uh, take on this story uh, after reading this. Number one, I really want to know more uh, because whenever there's a, a story that's written in this way, it, it looks very bad for the tower in this story. Uh, however, um, oftentimes, um, it's not this one sided and I'd like to, uh, I'd like to update the story in the future when more information comes out. Um, so I'm, I'm for the sake of the tower, I'm, I'm hoping there's, there's more to the story. I'm also thinking to myself, you know, if, if all of this information in this story is, is accurate, um, where is the local law enforcement agency in this instance? If, you know, the property manager did in fact tell the tower, Hey, listen, I don't want your services, you know, get out of here, take your signs down. Uh, we don't want you towing any more cars. And they didn't uh, heed that instruction. It really raises some concerns about number one, you know, hey, property manager, did you attempt to call law enforcement agency and say, hey, I've got this issue on my hands. You know, look out for your residents in that instance, if that is in fact um, an accurate uh, description of what transpired. Um, this again brings me to um, remind and, and reemphasize my point that I've discussed ad nauseum. And that's if you're going to conduct private property impound booting, um, any non-consensual towing activity, you really should conduct this stuff uh, thoughtfully. There's so many laws and, and, and legislation out there, and it varies by jurisdiction. Um, you know, get a lawyer and get some advice on how to conduct this stuff properly so that you can stay out of the news. Again, I do not like seeing towers um, discussed in this manner in the media. I, I don't think it does a service uh, for any tower. All right, moving along. Um, and my apologies in advance to Tennessee, but we are back uh, in Memphis, Tennessee. And this is towing and poop, guys. Um, you can't make this headline up. Um, but apparently in um, the Memphis, uh, Tennessee area, a tower uh, allegedly threw a bag of feces uh, at a trucker. And, um, you know, before you uh, start laughing hysterically, uh, let me get through this. Um, you know, it, it, the story indicates that the trucker, you know, it seemed to be like a long haul trucker. He stopped at a truck stop. He apparently ignored you know, you have to pay to park here, signs at the truck stop, park there. Uh, I, I suppose the truck stop contacted the towing company and said, hey, you know, there's a guy here who's unauthorized to be parked here. Um, the tower came out, put a boot on the vehicle. Uh, apparently an argument ensued between the towing company and the truck driver, of course, as is the case oftentimes. Um, and this is where it gets really uh, bizarre in terms of some accusations leveled against the tower. The trucker is alleging that after they placed the boot, he got in his truck and locked the doors. Um, and they began sort of like the process of hooking up his truck, which is kind of dubious, I, I, I think. Uh, and I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to assume that most towers would probably assess it that way as well. You know, there's somebody in the truck and they're, they're sort of trying to you know, disconnect perhaps the drive line. I don't know. The story was not that uh, detail oriented, but they began to uh, work on his truck. And um, it gets even more interesting because there's another allegation that, you know, while he's in the truck and they're beginning this process of hooking up his truck, uh, they attempted to unlock the doors with him in the cab of the truck, uh, perhaps in the sleeper. I don't know. Uh, he says he was terrified, um, et cetera. And, and, and certainly um, I'd have to say, yeah, that probably is pretty terrifying if you're 
uh, in your truck and somebody's trying to enter the truck, particularly if they're not like a law enforcement person. Uh, imagine uh, a lot of people would take exception to that. Um, you know, I think probably like many other stories such as this, a uh, few that we've outlined uh, on today's episode, um, there's probably a little bit more to this. Um, there, there are some references that they were charging him $900 an hour. I, I don't know how accurate that is. Um, and I don't uh, know that he actually paid that. And there is no um, effort in the story. There's no effort made to provide any kind of conclusion. So perhaps we'll be looking for updates uh, to this. Um, again, there's my thoughts are there's more to outrageous stories like this. Um, I really hope um, for the sake of the tower that they didn't actually throw poop uh, at the trucker, however funny that might be. Um, there's a lot of reasons not to do that. I mean, it's freaking gross, first of all. Uh, second of all, you know, you're not doing our industry any help here uh, by engaging in conduct like that. So I, I hope that that part of the story uh, is false. And, you know, I'll conclude my thought. My final thought on this story is... is is pretty much the thought I have for every story that involves uh, this type of towing. And that's, you know, you need to really carefully conduct these type of services. Um, these types of confrontations and conflict, the probability is very high uh, for uh, a conflict in, 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 in this type of towing. So you really need to be thoughtful about how you're conducting yourself in the course uh, of doing this type of work. And, and let's not forget, everybody is videotaping everything. So if you can't do this kind of work um, without, you know, being the butt end of a video, uh, for, you know, for poor conduct, um, you should probably reconsider doing this type of work. Um, so we're going to give Tennessee a break here and uh, move on to the next story. Utah, you're next. Um, so this story involves... Um, Many people in Utah, many vehicle owners uh, lodging complaints against, I think, three or four um, police agencies in Utah. And the allegations are, or I should say, the proposed legislation uh, that's being discussed in this story uh, is in response to allegations leveled against three police departments um, to which they're 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 accused of improperly notifying vehicle owners of the details of the towing of their vehicle. In other words, these people were trying to locate their vehicles uh, subsequent to the vehicles being impounded and were unable to find these vehicles. And the story indicates that, you know, by the time they discovered who had these vehicles, um, thousands of dollars of fees accrued. Again, a little bit fuzzy details because we don't know what that means. We don't know what the contracted fees are. We don't know what the rates are. So that they could have found their cars in a matter of days or it could have been a matter of weeks. We don't know uh, what led to those fees. We don't know if you know these vehicles were recovered from an accident scene or if they were a simple like arrest uh, type vehicle impoundment. So you know they're they're uh, I want to reserve judgment uh, on on that particular. Um, allegation in the story until more is known. Um, so obviously, you know, they weren't able to locate their vehicles in a timely fashion. And, you know, every state differs in terms of how a law enforcement agency, uh, or I should say in terms of what a law enforcement agency is required to do in the course of ordering a vehicle to be impounded by their contracted tower of choice. Uh, they have requirements. Those requirements are designed to uh, inform vehicle owners because oftentimes, you know, I know I know many people listening would say, well, hey, the guy's in the car, you know, he got pulled over. But oftentimes the people operating the vehicle are not the owner of the vehicle. And the officer is going to make a decision as to whether or not the vehicle meets criteria for impoundment, uh, regardless of who's driving it. So, so that much we know. And according to the story, the new legislation or new law, I should say, makes the notification process much simpler uh, and easier to comply with uh, for the benefit of the officer, which, uh, according to the story, there was kind of a, a very burdensome process for the officer to fill out paperwork uh, for towed vehicle notification. So it's good news that this process is being simplified. Excuse me. That makes the tower look horrible. And it also, you know, 
does not make the law enforcement agency uh, look very good uh, in the course of that process as well. Um, and my final thought on this is, you know, this story is about Utah, but um, what we're seeing around the country, and this is happening at a pace that's much slower than I would like, but what we are seeing around the country is different law enforcement agencies, different government agencies in general, uh, looking to adopt emerging, emerging technologies, I should say, um, and, and adopt them more widely to kind of streamline governmental tasks that are required for them to be compliant. So this is a good thing. Uh, I'm glad uh, to see that, you know, law enforcement agencies looked at this and said, hey, let's fix this. Let's make this less burdensome for the officers and let's make this process a better experience for vehicle owners. All right. So we're into Omaha now. Um, we have uh, a recent story in Omaha uh, concerning some private property impound practices. Um, you know, it, it pains me personally to see so many news stories uh, centered around private property towing. I mean, I, I hate to say this, but almost every news story that's negative is 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 almost exclusively uh, or a very high percentage, I should say, um, concerning private property towing. And then, you know, I have a personal um, kind of opinion on that. I wish it wasn't the case. Uh, however, uh, as I've already said, and as many of you listening probably already know, um, oftentimes there are critical facts and pieces of information that are left out of these articles. And this one's no exception, uh, but let's get to it. So Apparently, many people, multiple vehicle owners, uh, were towed from a downtown Omaha parking lot. Apparently, there was an event nearby, and there were some paid parking lots uh, nearby. Um, the, the you know the allegations are that there's some dubious activity by the tower, uh, or, or some dubious circumstances and practices employed by the tower in the course of towing cars. Um, some of the vehicle owners referenced the fact that. You know, hey, other people were parked there, so we thought it was okay. I think everybody who's listening knows that that's, you know, immaterial. Um, you know, other people's mistakes uh, is not an excuse. Um, however, many owners were claiming that we were confused about the pay to park. There was a reference made like, well, the att attendant wasn't there. And according to the tower who provided some content for the story, the tower says, hey, the sign is clear. There's no attendant here. You can't park here. You know, you can only park here when you can demonstrate that you've paid the attendant. Um, so obviously there's a little bit of a he said, she said uh, in this story. Um, I, I did find one detail of the news article very, very troubling. And, and this is, you know, I feel very strongly about this just as a general business practice. Um, however, uh, there's a reference in the story made that the tower... For the purposes of claiming a vehicle, I should I should elaborate. Apparently, the tower is open 24-7, but the tower is closed from Friday at 3 p.m. until Monday at 10 a.m. Uh, for the purposes of claiming vehicles. Now, the story did indicate that, you know, he's not allowed to charge for storage during the time that he's closed. However, and, and I'm going to get to this in a little bit more detail. However, th this is, a, is, is kind of a... Um, Again, even if allowed, it, it's something that concerns me as somebody who exclusively does private property towing for a living. Um, and I'll break down my concerns here in a moment. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting detail of the story. Um, my thoughts um, about this, and again, there's an absence of, of certain important details that would help me develop a little bit of a better and, and or stronger opinion on this. But regardless of the law or otherwise, I think it's completely inappropriate to deny the ability of a vehicle owner to claim their vehicle 24-7, 365. Um, that, that's my opinion. Many jurisdictions around the country don't even allow that. Um, I don't know for certain whether that's allowed in Omaha or not. The news story seems to indicate that, that it is. Um, so that remains to be seen. If you're in Omaha, please let us know. Uh, uh, drop a comment. Uh, I'd like to hear what some of you guys have to say about that. Um, you know, another thing, another thought I have here is, you know, vehicle owners are understandably frustrated about the inability to claim their vehicle. So again, 
referencing back to, hey, whether this is allowed or not, um, for towers not to understand that vehicle owners are going to be unhappy with that fact, I think is ridiculous. And I think we really have to be introspective uh, as it relates to, you know, if we're going to provide towing services 24 hours a day, um, there should be no good reason why we cannot uh, allow people to claim their vehicles um, you know, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, uh, again, regardless of whether or not we are encumbered or uh, required, I should say, to provide uh, vehicle claim services around the clock, um, it's just not a good look, uh, regardless of, of the requirements. So I just wanted to leave you guys with some current news. I really appreciate everybody tuning in. And yet another reminder, you know, if you aren't willing to know Please don't tow.